So here's the thing. At some point during March 2015, every registered nurse in the Trust will have received their copy of the new code from the Nursing and Midwifery Council, NMC for short. The code sets out the professional standards of practice and behaviour for every nurse and midwife, whatever their role, be it direct care or supporting practice through leadership, research or education. Some of you may have had a quick read and then put it to one side. Well, for those of you who did, you need to get it back out again and read it. Discuss it with colleagues and make it central to your daily practice, especially as the code will be the focal point for the way nurses renew their registration in future, known as revalidation. So why did the NMC spend months revising and consulting on the code? Well, a lot has changed since the previous version came into force in 2008. We have seen, for example, the rise of social media like Facebook and Twitter. There's also been a number of reports which have raised serious concerns about healthcare. These include reports such as the Francis Report, into care failings at mid-staffs, the Cluid and Heart Report, the Newberg Review of the Livable Care Pathway about how people at the end of life are cared for, and increasingly extended roles for nursing, most notably in non-medical prescribing. It was important that the Code address these in order to protect the public and instill confidence. The Code has been revised around four key principles. These are much simpler and easier to understand than those in the previous version of the Code. For example, in 2008's Code, the first principle required nurses and midwives to make the care of people your first concern, treating them as individuals and respecting their dignity. That doesn't exactly tip off the tongue too easily, so in the revised Code, the equivalent principle is simply prioritise people. In 2008, we were required to work with others to protect the health and well-being of those in our care, their families, carers and the wider community. That's been pared down in the new code to practice effectively. The two other principles in the revised code are preserve safety and promote professionalism and trust. That's much simpler, I think you'll agree. Prioritise people. This area of the code is about nurses putting the interests of people who need or who use our services first. It's about making their care our main concern and making sure that service users are treated with respect and dignity. It's making sure that their needs are properly considered, assessed and responded to and that any discriminatory attitudes are challenged. Practice effectively. This principle requires registered nurses to assess need and deliver or advise on treatment, or give help, including preventative and rehabilitative, without too much delay and to the best of their ability. We need to do so on the basis of the best evidence available and best practice. Section 11 talks about delegation. Nurses are accountable for their decisions to delegate tasks and duties to other people. We must make sure that the other person is competent to do what you've asked them to do and fully understand the instructions they are given. We must make sure that everyone we delegate to is adequately supervised and supported so that they can provide safe and compassionate care. Very importantly, we must confirm that the outcome of any task delegated to someone meets the required standard. Preserve safety. This principle requires nurses to ensure that patients and public safety is protected. We must work within the limits of our competence, exercise our professional duty of candour and raise concerns immediately whenever we come across situations that put patients or public safety at risk. Section 18 provides details on how nurses should advise on, prescribe, supply, dispense or administer medicines. Promote professionalism and trust. The principle requires that nurses uphold the reputation of our profession at all times. We should each be a model of integrity and leadership for others to aspire to in order to build trust and confidence in the profession from patients, people receiving care, other healthcare professionals and the general public. Section 20.10 requires that we use all forms of spoken, written and digital communication including social media and networking sites responsibly and respect the right to privacy of others at all times. 
We must never allow someone's complaint to affect the care we provide to them and we need to use all complaints as a form of feedback and an opportunity for reflection and learning to improve our practice. So there we are. We hope that the overview of the code is helpful. But what we really need you to do is to read it and use it to guide your nursing practice on a daily basis. Talk about it with colleagues in handover and at team meetings. Use the code when you're working with student nurses to help them understand the requirements of being a professionally registered nurse and reflect on the code in supervision. Read about the code on the NMC website and in various journals and keep an eye out for briefings from our Nursing Advisory Council. Use the code to help you prepare for revalidation, the new way in which nurses will renew their registration. Get your practice hours in, make sure you're meeting your continuing professional development requirements and start reflecting on the feedback you receive, be it a thank you or a complaint. Most importantly, help us to embed the code across the trust and let us use it together to improve practice.